Okay, there we go. Hello, welcome. Welcome to Unwrapped. These are bite sized videos to help answer your package food business questions. So, if you are starting a package food business, whether that's um, kombucha or jam or coffee or baked goods of any kind, ice cream, just look at the shelf back there, all sorts of good, delicious products. So you're in the right place. I am Sari Kimball. I am the creator of Food Business Success, and I help people start and grow their packaged food business so that it's not an expensive hobby. It's a profitable business. That is always my goal. All right. This question gets asked so many times that I want to be sure I did a whole video dedicated to protecting your recipe. Now, I do want to just have you, if you have questions, you can type them in if you're listening live. Um, but please uh, subscribe to this um, to this channel, Food Business Success, and like and comment and let me know what other questions you have in the video itself. All right, so <clears throat> how do you protect your recipe? I'll just say from the start, it's not very easy. It's not something that most people are able to do kind of legally. Um, and I will go over the different scenarios, but at the end, I do have some creative solutions that I have seen work for some of my clients. So let me just start with, you have to declare your ingredients, right? On the package per FDA compliance, or if you're doing cottage food, same thing. So it, in theory, right, I could, as a consumer or somebody in the industry, um, could, you know, reverse engineer your recipe backwards, right? Because all of your ingredients should be listed um, from heaviest to lightest. Now, what I don't know, of course, is the process, but a food scientist could probably figure it out. So I don't say that to discourage you, but I just want you to kind of be um, realistic about what's possible. Now, I know some of you make something really unique, really delicious. Um, I do have some people, I would say 75% of people are like no big deal, but um, I do work with some people who are very cautious about even telling me about the recipe. They really want to guard that and I get it. Um, but I often say ideas are cheap right? You can have the best idea in the world, but are you really going to execute it? And when you're a small manufacturer, when you're a small producer, no, you're not on anybody's radar. Now that said, if you are coming in, um, you know, you have a lot deep pockets, you're really trying to take on a certain area of the market and then you may want to be much more cautious. But I just find generally, I would rather you tell people about your idea and not necessarily your recipe, but like get it out in the world, start getting feedback. Don't hold it so close to the vest. So the first thing, so we're going to work through trademarks, uh, patents and copywriting, and then also trade secrets. So these are kind of the four buckets of, um, is this a way for me to keep my recipe a secret? So trademark, uh, you cannot trademark a recipe. This a trademark is going to refer to um, a brand name. It's going to refer to maybe a slogan that somebody has trademarked or a unique and specific design like a logo. So that's it. That's what you can trademark. I do highly recommend you, um, especially if you're going to go on Amazon or if you want to be on store shelves, uh, if you really want to go big with this, I do highly recommend trademarking your name and checking to make sure that the brand name that you chose uh, is not already taken. And it can get a little bit complex. I have an amazing trademark attorney who can also help with um, patents as well. So you can always reach out to me, um, put, put a note and send me, DM me or email and I can connect you guys. So trademarks out. So you can't trademark a recipe. Uh, a patent 
uh, is something that the U.S. USPTO, U.S. Patent and Trade Office, um, they don't make this easy for you. It can work, um, but only if your recipe is very novel and is non-obvious. So if, if you're just swapping out a different kind of flour or just a little bit different, you know, if you're just doing something a little bit different, it is not considered novel. It needs to be like, it can't just be like, well, I did ice cream with oat milk, but it's still ice cream. That's obvious. So there aren't that many uh, <laughs> out there. Uh, Uncrustables was one I looked up that did get a patent. So this is a very challenging one. Most recipes cannot be patented. Um, sometimes potentially maybe the process itself could be patented. If you're using, if you develop some really unique form of equipment, you could patent the equipment potentially. Um, but patents are probably not the way you want to go. Uh, it could be very expensive and it's highly unlikely. Uh, so then the next one is copywriting. Could I copyright my recipe? So copyright refers to, it's that um, circle C in the in the middle. Oh, and by the way, a trademark is the little TM above. But when it is officially registered, so the TM just means that uh, that company has the intention of trademarking it or they are in the process. So they're sort of holding it. Um, and then when you actually get it registered, so food business success is a registered trademark and it has the R, circle R. So a copyright is the circle C, <clears throat> and this is going to refer to creative work. So art, writing, design, um, something more like that. So you can copyright a cookbook. So those recipes can be yours, but they are public recipes, right? They are your work of art, so to speak. Um, the other way, which would be highly unlikely in your situation as a packaged food business, is if the food is going to be displayed as art. <laughs> so that's probably unlikely. So no, you cannot copyright a specific recipe that wouldn't hold any legal um, legal standing. So, but if you published a cookbook, then you could essentially copyright your recipes so that they couldn't just be duplicated in somebody else's work. So really you're left with one other option, which is what's called a trade secret. Now, anything can be a trade secret. The most famous one is Coca-Cola, right? Their recipe is a trade secret. And Essentially, how you protect a trade secret, there isn't a formal legal process, um, but basically you, as the creator, know what those ingredients are. You know the process and the weights and all of that, and so you keep it all in your head. It's a trade secret. Now, again, we have a little bit of a limitation here because we do have to publish almost all ingredients, and there are some exceptions, but almost all ingredients need to be published uh, as per the FDA. But you'll notice on Coca-Cola, it'll say like spices, and there are certain things that you can get away with doing that. But you want to work with an attorney or work with somebody like myself to help you with that. So essentially, if you were going to hire people, then you would want to have an employee sign a legal binding NDA or confidentiality agreement. So that's really your only option is to call it a trade secret. You are the one responsible for enforcing it. You need to get, um, you know, you need to get an employee to sign that. Um, and then of course, if you're working with a co-manufacturer, um, in order to help protect the recipe, you're going to really need to want to have a really good contract in place with a really good confidentiality agreement. Now, there are still some loopholes. I mean, there's things that like a co-manufacturer could just change one little thing and then call it their own, um, right? I mean, essentially, that's what recipes are, right? As they get developed, like we're just making small tweaks. Um, we're not reinventing the wheel in most cases. So, 
Uh, again, I highly recommend if you're going to work with a cone manufacturer that you get a very good contract in place and you work with an attorney. I have an amazing one who's in the packaged food industry. Just Her name is Lauren Handel and you can DM me and I can happy to connect you. So that all said, I want to give you some creative ways around a couple of creative ideas of how you can kind of get around this piece so that you still feel like it's a little bit more protected. Um, and be sure if you have questions, type those into the chat if you're live or put that put your questions in the comments and do subscribe to this channel and like this video. So a couple of creative ways around it are... Um, so I worked with a gal who made the most amazing gluten-free cupcakes and she didn't want, you know, she was hiring an employee and she didn't want that employee to, uh, know the exact measurements. Right. And so what I said was, well, what I would do is you can pre-measure out and create a mix ahead of time, uh, so that she has the mix, right. Of like, a lot of the ingredients, maybe it's a baking soda and salts and some special ingredient that you don't want to tell her and um, the flour or whatever, right? And then they're just putting it together. So you're creating bulk mix or um, individual packages of mixes, and then somebody else is putting them all together. So you could control some of that with um, dividing up the process. So, or like one employee only ever does this part of it and one does this part. So hopefully the two never, <laughs> never meet. Um, again, you can definitely have them sign an NDA as well to help protect that. Um, if you're working with a co-packer, uh, every now and again, it's not like, it's not usual, but, um, if you really want to protect it, you could have one manufacturer do one part of the process and then they send it to the other manufacturer. Um, and then they would put it all together for you. So that's one, another potential way to do it. Um, you could, if you're in a commercial kitchen, then you could potentially make part of it and again, send it to your co-manufacturer. So that's really kind of the only practical ways that you can really create separation. Otherwise, it's really going to be your trade secret to protect, um, usually with uh, an NDA is really your best course of action. Uh, so those are my two ideas there. Uh, someone asked, any tips on finding a good co-manufacturer? Um so the, the Specialty Food Association has a good list. You can go um, and go onto their website and then find their co-manufacturer list. I have a couple of really great lists inside Food Business Success as well that I've pulled from various organizations and put together. Um, sometimes you can just search like... Um, I don't know, gluten-free mixes, co-packer or co-manufacturer, or you might say private label or white label, just to try to find some hits, you know, some, some search results that come up um, using, you know, your country name as well. Maybe you're not in the U.S., so Canada or something like that. Um, so it's honestly just a little bit of a, a hunt and peck game. It's a lot of searching around. It's getting into forums, like come join private uh, my private Facebook group, Food Business Success. And there's over 700 people in there. Um, some that are much farther along have co-packers. So asking those questions and being specific about what your product is because a co-manufacturer um, is going to be very product specific. Um, but there's other forums out there for, um, CPG is the industry you're in or packaged food. So at you, you're gonna, this is a who strategy where you're at, like, who else would know about this? And then also just a lot of Google searching and following through. It's a great question and welcome Monica as a new subscriber. All cool. right. That is what I have for you today, all about how you can protect your recipe. As I said in the beginning, um, the FDA is going to require um, a certain amount of disclosure, uh, and you just have to do it. 
Like there's no way that you can just be like, sorry, I'm just hiding these ingredients, right? We as consumers need to know what's in our food and we have the FDA to regulate that. As I said, there are a couple of caveats where you don't, you could list spices, but only certain spices. So you want to be sure that you're getting some help with that. Um, and everything should be listed in order of heaviest to lightest um, and declaring your allergens, of course. So uh, what I say is just, like I said, ideas are cheap. Get it out into the world. Um, it's pretty unlikely as a small manufacturer that some, some, someone's going to come in and swoop up your recipe. So just get it out in the world, start testing it and step into, um, being a, being an entrepreneur. Um, somebody asked what spices can be grouped, uh, into just, just spices. Uh, so you can, um, I, I mean, I have all that stuff inside food business success, or you can do a Google search for FDA spices regulation, but essentially it's spices that you cannot just eat on their own. So like sage, you wouldn't really be like, so, okay. The example would be like garlic. Okay. Okay. Um, I can eat garlic in, raw, like a whole thing of garlic, and I can also have it as a spice. So that is a, an uh, ingredient that you have to list. Something like chilies, chili powder, you have to list. If it's something more like nutmeg, you're not going to eat a whole thing, <laughs> a round of nutmeg, right? So that's where the difference is. Um, so you, if you had like you know, nutmeg and cinnamon and cloves, people are not eating those things as whole things. So you could uh, put those together as spices. The other caveat is that they have to weigh a certain percentage under of the whole recipe. So a couple of things to check out there. All right, you guys, so fun to be here. I hope this was really helpful. Please subscribe, please like this video and put any comments below. And I do have an amazing checklist for starting a packaged food business. So it's foodbizsuccess.com forward slash checklist. And I'll put the link in the description below as well. All right. Have a great day.